As always, you can find all my lectures and everything. Uh, I upload all the videos and notes to Canvas and YouTube video, but that doesn't give you a reason to run away from the class and, and ditch me. Okay, it's kind of not polite, but I always also make sure I tell people that I spend a lot of time creating my notes and my lectures, and I use four or five resources, not just our book. That's kind of boring, and ASU videos. Why would I repeat them? So I have four or five resources to show you animations and formulas and tricks and shortcuts. And that's why my notes are so popular. Many professors, to new crack <coughs> professors with 30 years of experience using my notes to teach their classes. So I try to make sure that your class is not a waste of time <coughs> and you're doing good. Rules of basic differentiation <coughs> basically means uh, screw the differ deriv derivative definition. Let's not do the limit. It's kind of boring. Nobody does it. So unfortunately, on the test, you'll have to do it. But after this, you will not have to do it at all. So that's a good news. The first rule says, if you differentiate the constant, gives you 0. Why? From now on, I will be giving you this, this kind of cool hint. Differentiation means how fast, right? How instantaneous rate of change. But let's kind of stick to this phrase, how fast something is changing. How fast does the constant change? What do you think? It doesn't change. That's why it's called constant. There's a name to it, constant. So it doesn't change. That's why the speed of the constant is zero. That makes sense. And that's, you know, there's a name called Constantin. It's a name. It's a Christian name, actually. So it actually means being stable, being constant. So that's uh, the idea behind the name. Anyway, and then when the power rule the most is the most important one uh, for now, power rule, and it's also the most easy one, but we always start with this power rule, which means, oh, this notation is not new. Last time I introduced it to you, d over dx, but it basically means this, x to the n, put parentheses, prime, that means derivative. n goes down, and by go down, I mean it multiplies by x, decrease power by one. That is power rule. So n, oh, well, that's very thick. n goes down, and now you change the power by decreasing it by 1. That works for everything except uh, n should not be minus 1. So, and, oh, oh, no, it's fine. Works for everything. Called power rule. I'm going to do lots of examples. e to the x has an amazing story. Derivative of e to the x is e to the x. e to the x prime, guess what, is e to the x. So this is a cool idea. I always mention the funny anecdote, which might not be funny, but I always mention it anyways. The, there's a, it's a very old anecdote. It's like <coughs> it was created in Soviet Union. Advisor told me, and an advisor of his advisor told me this anecdote and stuff like that. Like very old uh, ghost from the Soviet Union. So there's a madhouse, and there's two mathematicians in the madhouse. First of all, it's already not surprising that there are two mathematicians in the madhouse. I like that part a lot. <laughs> Nobody questioning that. And then the one, one mathematician is crazy and kind of aggressive. He's running everyone, running around the madhouse, and he keeps yelling, I'm going to differentiate. I'm going to differentiate. And since nobody knows what it means, every other patient, so they all scared and keep hiding under the table or running away. So the doctor walks around and he observes this behavior. And then the, he sees that the aggressive mathematician runs toward another person and yells at him, I'm going to differentiate you. And that person doesn't care, just keeps sitting. So the doctor was impressed and he approaches that other patient and asks you, aren't you afraid? He's going to differentiate you. And another person was a mathematician too, and he says, I don't care, I'm e to the x. And it's not a very funny anecdote, but it helps you to remember the formula. e to the x gives you e to the x when you differentiate and when you integrate, which we're going to learn in this class, until you get into calculus 3. In calculus 3, it becomes 0 suddenly. And that's how beautiful differentiation is. So now you know. Log is a special function. So let me put these two in the... Uh, table in the boxy box. So e to the x gives you e to the x, but what happens to log? It's 1 over input. When you differentiate ln x, you do 1 over input. So I'm going to write down like this. You take your input and you divide by this input. It's easier 
to see this way when you have complicated functions inside of the log. Just divide by that. And then the other two which are happening, these two will happen on the test, sine and cosine. Sine and cosine give you each other. That's how cool it is. Sine gives you cosine, cosine, cosine gives you sine, but one of them gives you <coughs> negative. So which one it is? I all, always tell students idea of that sine is a normal dude while cosine is a weirdo. Sine at zero is zero. That's so nice of it. Sine um, of minus x kicks it out and becomes minus sine x because it's a odd function. And also derivative of sine gives you cosine. It just behaves like a good person, good citizen. While cosine is a weirdo. Cosine on the other hand, cosine at zero is not zero. What is it? One, what a heck, like why would it be one at zero? Cosine of minus x suddenly is just cosine x because it's even, it swallows the <coughs> sign, swallows the negative sign while sine is spits it out. And that also helps you to remember that cosine give you negative sign. That is the idea. So you need to remember all of this forever. In general, in STEM, you will see this a lot in engineering, sound systems, architecture. There's so many trigonometric functions everywhere. And that's why they're torturing you with trigonometric functions. So sine and cosine are the same ways. They just shift it. That's why if you ask how fast the sine is, it's cosine fast. And how fast the cosine is, it's minus sine fast. How cool is that? Let's uh, do that. And uh, let's do number seven. I have one more to add. Property number seven. If you have a constant C multiplied by a function and you want to differentiate this product, you can kick the C out and just differentiate F. That is the property of a constant C constant. Because when constant is multiplied by a function, it gives you rate of change. It's a rate. So it will just stay outside. Wait for you to finish differentiating f of x. Let me give you thousands of examples, and then you will be happy doing homework. This is a pleasant homework to do um, until like last 10 problems, which are tangent line. That one is just time consuming. But in general, 2.3 is a really good homework. Examples. I know you don't believe me, but uh, you will see. One. So people who know derivatives, that is not your time to shine. Just politely asking you to enjoy other people learning this for the first time. There's nothing that as amazing as learning such a thing as a, for the first time. Derivative is such a core of science <laughs> around the world. It's, it's like learning a multiplication table. Can you imagine around the world, everyone learn a multiplication table in different languages, but they do. So this is what it is. Learning derivatives from scratch is as beautiful <coughs> as learning multiplication table. Everything depends. In this world, everything can be described with derivatives. So you're learning how the world was created, how the cells are dividing, how the wind is blowing, coloring, image recognition. All of this has derivatives. But it always starts with a boring memorization of formulas. What is derivative for 57? Again, people who don't know yet. People at the end, especially. How fast the 57 changes? Oh, did I just, <laughs> I just put a zero? <laughs> well, okay, I should put like a question mark. I, it's just, it's a habit already. I cannot even slow down. Wow, okay, that was kind of a total failure. So why the zero, question mark? <laughs> because, yeah, you wanted to say? No. It's a constant. 57, how fast is 57 changes? Zero fast. In general, y equals 57 is like it looks like that. So why would it even change? y equals 57. What is derivative of that? Zero. The slope is zero. It's flat floor. How high this floor is? 57 inches high. So that's it. It's clear. Now the tricky question, pi. How fast does the pi change? Also zero. So don't get confused. You will see it on the exam. You will see something uh, or in your homework, e to the 27. Okay, don't be confused. Just because it looks complicated doesn't mean it's not a constant. Boom, so we got that part. However, two, now it's getting interesting. How about 
57x. Let me ask people who just see it for the first time. Derivative of 57x. <coughs> Let's go back and see. Derivative of x. No, it's not here, but we can write it down. Derivative of x is 1. Just remember that. It comes from the power rule. Um, the 0 goes down, blah, blah, blah. x to the 0 is 0. Uh, x to the 0 is 1. So 57 is a constant. So it's going to be 0 times 1? No. Just 57 because 57 goes outside. And the answer is 57 because x prime is 1. So let me write down times 1 equals 57. So there is a difference between 57 plus x and 57 times x. 57 times x, 57 survives <coughs> because it's uh, multiplied by the function, in this case, x or sine x or log x. If it's multiplied, it's a rate. It's like a sticker. It sticks to the function, so it survives. But if it's isolated, let me write down this cool word, isolated, that's, no. Isolated function, if it's isolated function, uh, constant, isolated standing over here, then the speed of 57 is zero. The speed of x is one, the answer is one. Does it make sense? The difference matters, yeah. So, oh, good question. The question is about this guy. We go back to this guy. The function e to the, see, that's a good point, because I just told you the joke, right? e to the x stays the same. The point is it has to be a function. So the input makes everything complicated. But if it's a constant, let me write down, constant. They aren't constants no matter how hard they are, even if they like raise to a sign of 35 and whatever prime, still it's a zero. Yeah, thank you for asking. You see, nobody else asked, and I'm pretty sure it was a good question. Yes? So, um, the derivative of 57 plus x becomes the derivative of 57 plus the derivative of x. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's correct. The question was, can we say that it was 57 prime? Plus x prime. Yes, the answer is correct. It is. So we can break it. That is was important. So comparing two things. Finally, the power rule. That's going to be your homework is all about the power rule and sine and cosine. x to the 57. See, I keep using the same random number. Remember, 57 goes <coughs> down. And by go down, I mean it's going to be multiplied by x. And then you do 57 minus 1. And of course, you don't have to write this down. You just do it fast. It's 57 x to the 56. How fast the function 57 x to the 57 is? <coughs> it's as fast as x to the 56 multiplied by 57. So that's kind of how you can see. Well, that was not too bad. But now we're going to introduce those crazy things like radicals and different powers. What is happening with the square root of x, for example? What is that? How would you take derivative of square root of x? Just like maybe someone at the end or to the right. People to the right. Yes? One by two. Let's not differentiate yet. So rewrite first, right? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. We're going to rewrite it. And you see, I'm still keeping prime. That means I did not differentiate yet. I'm rewriting it. So you keep, you keep the notation of the prime or derivative until you actually differentiate it. So we're going to rewrite it as x to the 1 half. And now power rule is the same. New people, who wants to do that? x to the 1 half gives you what? Yes? Oh. Uh, I think it's going to be 0.5x. Yeah. Let's keep 1 half. Yeah. Yeah, then uh, 0.5 minus 1. Negative 0.5. Amazing. I like fractions. Uh, amazing. Did you all get how? Oh, let me write down once. One half minus one. So starting now, you will have to deal with small fractions and quickly calculating them. <coughs> and don't use a calculator. Try to just learn how to work with fractions fast. One half minus one 
one is anything you want, three over three, four over four, two over two. So in this case, I keep in mind it's like two over two minus one half. Or you can um, imagine it as a dollar. You had 50 cents and someone take, took away dollar from you. Well, now you have 50 cents missing. So that's money. Everyone knows money. <coughs> if you calculate money, everyone knows that. Five. Let's get weirder. That sounds bad. Um, one over x to the three quarters. Let's differentiate that. Let's differentiate that. Again, I like I don't know how to differentiate fractions. We only know power rule. So what should we do? Let's create a power. Ah, you know this stuff. That's why I don't want to ask people who know this stuff. If you've seen this before, it's like not new material anymore. Yes? Negative three quarters. Do you all agree? Prime. Thank you. Amazing. Check lecture zero. That's when in lecture zero I reviewed all the power stuff. How to work with powers because that's a very crucial right away in the, this class. And now, who wants to tell me how to differentiate x to the minus three quarter? People at the left at the very end. People with computers ordering something from Amazon. Yes. X to the minus what? Minus one by two. No? Let's check. You're doing great. One by four. One by four. Uh, let me check. It doesn't uh, matter. It doesn't take too much time to check. So we do minus one. And just like I told you, this idea in my mind is minus three quarters minus four over four. Minus three. Oh, that's how I do it in my mind. Minus three over four minus four over four gives you <coughs> seven over four. So that's how I check it. So the answer is minus three quarters x to the minus 7 over 4. That is the answer. Now there's always a student in class who asks the same question every year. Anyone wants to ask a question right now? So you're going to type this into web work. Do you need to rewrite it back as 1 over x to the 7th 4? No, don't do that. It's fine. Uh, in precalculus and algebra, people tortured uh, students with Oh, make sure you write it down with the positive exponent, no radicals. In this class, in all other classes, nobody cares anymore. Like it was such a basic material, now nobody cares. You can type this in carefully. Don't forget parentheses. Don't forget parentheses. Put parentheses everywhere, just in case. When it comes to web work, you cannot have too many parentheses. And then it will accept your answer. Is that good? <coughs> now, um, what I wanted to also say is, we did 1 over x. Let's do 1 over x. So square root of x will happen all the time. So I highly recommend to be good at this one. It's just everywhere. Either you memorize it or you know how to take how to do it, like so. Some people remember it as 1 over 2 squared of x. If you want to remember that, that's fine. And 1 over x will be everywhere. 1 over x will happen again and again all the time. How do you do 1 over x? Derivative of 1 over x is x to the minus 1, right? Uh, I mean, derivative of x to the minus 1. And now you differentiate. Minus 1 goes down. Put parentheses. Put parentheses. x to the minus 1, minus 1, minus 2. So either you remember this or you remember minus 1 over x squared. Both are good. You don't have to pick your favorite. You can remember both or one or just know how to do it. But it will be everywhere, just letting you know. Like so. So remember these ones. I, again, I don't. my memory is bad, so I don't remember anything, to be honest. But I, re, I know how to do it. So that's why I like math for physics and chemistry. People like me would not survive there. But in math, you can derive stuff. So that's that's the beauty of it. <coughs> Finally, let's do the idea of many things at the same time. That's your homework, basically. Example for your homework. I want you to learn how to differentiate fast. The book is too slow. They are very slowly approaching every problem. It's fine. I believe you can do it fast right away. And for some topics, being fast is easier for some reason. 
7x cubed minus 32 over 17x plus 1 quarter x to the 4 minus x to the 3 fifths plus pi x squared. Let's keep going. Minus 1,000. Let's keep going. Uh, plus, let me just move it somewhere. Plus sine x, because why not? Plus 1 over x plus 17 pi cubed. I just made it up and why not? Creative process. Okay, that's the last term. I just moved to, to see if this is the last term. While you're writing, let me check the poll. 84, 84 votes to move the test. Okay, let's keep going. You take derivative fast. You don't write every function separately. You can do it. F prime. F prime or people write a DF over DX. That's the same thing. I told you last time we have different notations. You will see capital D sometimes. I don't like that. Okay, again, new people who never seen this before. Can you yell at the same time? Derivative of 7x to the third. 21x to the two. Amazing. Agree? Uh, is it questioning? Should I read again? Let me zoom in. 17 pi cube. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> Let me do like this. Next, minus 32 over 17x. Yell again together. Negative 32 over 17. What happens to x? It's 1. Derivative of x is 1. But 32 over 17 survives because it was multiplied. I call it a sticker. Sometimes people like that. It's a sticker. So it sticks to the function, and that's why it survives. But if it's standing by itself, minus 32 over 17 plus x, then it's 0. But sticker survives. Plus, okay, people at the end, one quarter x to the four. Just x cube. What happened with one quarter to the four? One quarter multiplied by four. Let me write it down because I think it's new. One quarter, four goes down. And you write down x and you decrease the power. So it's very pleasant to see things like this when they nicely cancel up. Minus x to the three fifths. Well, it's actually negative. People in the middle. Ah, you don't. No, 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 no. Not today. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> Let other people do it. When you see it for the first time, I think that's very fun to do. It. Yes? 3 over 5x to the power of negative 2 over 5. Negative 2 over 5. Let's check. I think it looks beautiful. If you don't know, take 3, 5 minus 5, 5. Gives you minus 2, 5. Makes sense. Quickly, be confident uh, you get. I don't recommend to do decimals when it comes to these problems. Okay, people at the very end in the middle. Pi x squared gives you... Pi x squared. So pi survives because the sticker. What happens to x squared? 2x. Exactly. <laughs> 2 pi times x. Does anyone have questions on this? So 2 goes down. Multiplied by pi. That's 2 pi. x to the 1. Everyone can yell this at the same time. Derivative of negative 1,000. Nothing. Zero. Mathematically, it's zero. <laughs> Nothing. Okay, now the hard stuff. Derivative of sine is cosine, but plus or minus? Plus. So remember, it's either or. One over x, we just did it. Don't uh, be confident if this is your first times. You take your pencil, you rewrite it as x to the minus one, and now you do it just like we did before, x to the minus three fifths or whatever was it. So x to the minus 1 gives you, minus 1 goes down, multiply x to the minus 2. Thank you. Amazing. 17 pi cube gives you 0, and this is the answer. So you can do it.
you can do it it's a uh, very fun actually it's fun to feel good you know in math class especially it's fun to feel good so let me show you this one this is the hard one too i think i should show you this square root of 13 over that's 13 not b square root of 13 over x cube but also before we move on um, ask me what do you think uh, I'm not claiming this is easy. Everyone are very good at this when they saw it before. When you see it for the first time, that's kind of weird. This stuff is weird. So ask me what do you feel about it. What are your concerns, questions? I think people who are good at this are unwillingly intimidating people who are not good at this. So it's hard to ask questions. But I promise you, after the first homework, you'll be as good at this as everyone else. It takes only one homework to gain the skill of differentiation with basic formulas. <coughs> so on the test, I did not put anything hard in, in comes to derivatives um, like this. It's a new topic. You just learn it. You will take a test. Oh, everything is very straightforward. So don't be afraid. Square root of 13 over x cubed. What are your suggestions? Please. Rewrite. I like that. Let me write down rewrite. Rewrite. But then how to rewrite it? Looks ugly. X to the minus 3. I love that. What happens to the x to the 13? It's just in front of it. So if you hesitate, it will be x to the 13 times 1 over x cubed. Now you know what, what, it, what, it's, what it means. x to the minus 3 times a root of 13. Does that make sense? And now you repeat the process. Put prime, don't forget. Prime disappears when I actually differentiate, so now there will be no prime. Square root of 13 survives or disappears? Survives. It's a sticker. It's multiplied by function. Minus 3 goes down, which means multiply by minus 3. X to the minus 4 or minus 2? Minus 4 because minus 3 minus 1. So that's the answer. I would rewrite it beautifully, but you don't have to. Minus 3 root x to the minus 4. Can you imagine that you're doing it right now and somewhere in Japan they will be doing it tomorrow and somewhere in China they will be doing it tomorrow and like the whole students around the world in different languages doing this. Exactly the same thing. So I feel like that that is a pure international language for you. You can show this when you travel in Korea and, and people from college will be like, oh yeah, we just did it last week or last year. So, and they know, they don't say it as a power rule, but they know what it is. They say it's something different in Korea, which we actually can Google in Wikipedia. And the last thing before we do the, <coughs> before, oh, let me see, should I give you all the tricks? Mm. Only whatever you see in the homework will go to the exam. But for you to know, there are more formulas. Let me do more formulas for you so you have them all in one place. Tricks. So we already know that sine x prime go, becomes cosine x. This goes to the exam one. And cosine x prime gives you minus sine x. So these, let me put it in beautiful rainbow box. That goes to the exam one. Let me write down. Exam one. But there's other stuff to it, which goes to all other exams. They just don't want to bother you with too many things right away. The most too important one to remember is tangent. Tangent x becomes secant squared. The problem is many people don't know what secant is because for you to know, in other countries, we don't learn secant and cosecant. I was surprised to see it here. What the heck is secant? I was already a PG student and I did not know what secant was. So in Europe and Asia, many of us don't know that. Let's write it down. Secant and cosecant were created to have a shortcut for two specific functions. Secant is one over cosine. But how do you remember it's over cosine or over sine? Do you know how finally one student told me last time? Yeah? When you can create a hexagon by sine cos and cos f cos f. And the opposite would be mad. Yeah, from the graph. You can do it from the triangle. You can do it mnemonic ways. All of these are great, but kind of takes time. Can I just remember? 
So some student told me last semester, and I loved it. Now I'm telling it to everyone. It starts with S, and it will be C. It starts with C, it will be S. <laughs> okay, your explanation is so much smarter than mine. But again, it's not <laughs> sometimes it's about convenience. 1 over sine x. So that's how now I never forget which and when is which. Secant starts with S, will be C, then start with C, will be S. So nice. So that's, that's something you're supposed to know, especially in American schools. They don't, they don't believe you don't know this, so you better know. So all of these functions also have derivatives. You can guess that. Secant, so tangent and secant, those two we will be testing you again and again and again. Secant prime <laughs> is, secant likes itself, so it repeats first. It likes to copy itself, and then it gives you tangent. In general, secant and tangent have have relationships close to what sine and cosine have. They give you each other, but uh, secant is too proud of itself, so it always copies itself. So that is good. And finally, I will show you something fun. And we're going to do the quiz. <coughs> Let me see the timer. Yeah, it's good. Higher order derivatives. That's the good one. I think, <coughs> I think you will enjoy it. Oh. 20, let's see. No, we can do it uh, on Monday then, because now I feel like... So let me ask you again, before I move on to higher order derivatives, besides, um, this is not a very urgent topic to mention anyways. 